Hello, welcome to my talk on adaptive LIDAR. My name is Lou Dusan. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the importance of LIDAR and uh, as a subset, the importance of something I will call adaptive LIDAR or agile LIDAR um, to the advancement of autonomous vehicles. So a little bit about me. I am the founder and CTO of AI. I started AI because I believed strongly that um, we needed to create a perception engine that was as good or better than human perception. Um, and for a lot of people, that is software. For me, that was a close relationship between firmware and software and hardware. Um, and so I, I sought out to, to found AI in order to, to accomplish just that. Before AI, I was a, uh, in aerospace and defense for many years, where I worked on concepts involving missiles of fire control, information, surveillance, reconnaissance, and remote sensing. Started my career in NASA, JPO, where I worked a lot on RF and radar concepts. Uh, then I moved to Lockheed Martin, where I did a lot of remote sensing concepts and uh, worked especially on the, uh, on the advanced targeting systems for jets. And then in Northrop Grumman, I concentrated on a lot of scout systems. And throughout my career, um, I was able to get involved in a lot of um, more secret, I would say, projects and um, had a lot of visibility into a lot of advanced remote sensing uh, techniques. So it, was a, it wasn't a stretch for me to get into the idea of LIDAR and sensing for autonomous vehicles. All right, today I wanna chat um, about LIDAR uh, and why it's gonna be everywhere and specifically about the reasons that LIDAR is important, and then a specifics on the types of LIDAR that I think are gonna be really important. So um, one of the reasons why LIDAR, I think is gonna be everywhere, is because it has some really interesting advantages. For example, compared to radar, LIDAR has much higher resolution. Uh, and, and so that means you can make more compact, more compact solutions when considering the size of the sensor, right? Um, it has the ability to get you really great resolution at long ranges. And at these long ranges, it's really important for current RFQs that are out because they're looking for small objects. Small objects are uh, very difficult for a highway autopilot, which is one of the most sought after things by consumers. Um, if you don't identify them early, it, it, it could derail the whole concept. And so the only sensor that's really capable of doing that in many different environments is LIDAR. So resolution at range is important. The compactness is important. And then the other thing that's really important with respect to LIDAR that I don't think a lot of people understand is it's a very deterministic uh, sensor in the sense that you don't do a lot of interpretation with respect to objects and um, trajectories of, of, of objects and identification of objects or blobs more specifically not even classifying the object but just identifying the object and because of that it, it means that you the, this phrase that i'm going to i'm going to use time to acquisition is really fast with lidar there's not a lot of interpretation not a lot of clutter you basically send out a pulse you time it and you plot where that pulse was in angular space you create a so-called point cloud and um, you can determine uh, objects in, in 3D really quickly. Now, the first example that you see it in, in, in this uh, uh, slide is on consumer electronics, especially handheld ones like the cell phones and iPads and, and, and regular cell phones, uh, um, iPhones, I should say. Um, and you would ask why? Their cameras are read, readily available today. And the answer is, it's really easy to do the compute on that. So if you can get the price down, and typically with short range applications, you can vary, you can be very cost competitive. Um, it, it's not a hard computational uh, load. And it's pretty, it's very deterministic as opposed to using, for example, disparity maps with cameras. And so that's why people gravitate towards it. It's not a hard engineering challenge. And of course, in automotive, there's a lot, intelligent transportation systems like intersections, uh, it's becoming very popular. And then for delivery vehicles, long haul trucking, you see it a lot. Long haul trucking is one of the areas where uh, I think autonomy is gonna be, uh, probably make its mark the quickest. Delivery vehicles under 35 miles an hour, uh, geofence, fixed route, um, it's already here. 
And then for trains, looking at small objects far away on, on railroad tracks is, a, is an important um, safety hazard. And, and then of course, airplanes not flying, but just taxiing um, and even takeoff. It's becoming uh, more and more popular as we see uh, RQs and requests for these technologies coming. Okay, now I wanna to switch to automotive. And I wanna talk a little bit about the corner cases in automotive and why life ends up being a really good sensor for it. Okay, I'm not gonna concentrate on all of them, but just three general areas, roadway obstacles. I think everybody understands why it's important to have um, eyes on very small objects at long distance. Right? The vehicles could uh, potentially traverse the object but lose control, uh, potentially hit them and get damaged or, and then have, and then potentially crash. Um, and sometimes like in the middle, it's not necessarily um, an object you need to worry about, but it's gonna potentially fool the camera and you wanna get more 3D information on it. And then on the far right, you see an overturned truck. And the interesting thing about this particular truck is if you look at it, it kind of looks a little bit like the ground. So it could potentially fool a camera, but don't, don't think of this picture. Think of some arbitrary resolution, some arbitrary day condition, weather condition. Um, trucks can get fooled with the sun shining off the truck. Uh, it could potentially blind it. Lots of different reasons. For radar, radar will definitely see the truck. The problem is radar will also see the oncoming car. It could potentially see an overhead sign and be fooled by it. So radar is not as reliable, even though it would definitely see it. And you wouldn't know if it was a real uh, positive or false positive. And then uh, LIDAR, you don't have to take my word here, but even though it's kind of shiny, it looks like a mirror, the LIDAR will see it and it will determine that a truck is there, give you the outline of the truck and you will make a, be able to acquire the truck very quickly and make the correct decision. Okay, then you have unpredictable objects. On the left, you have weaving in and out of the field of view uh, motorcycles. And so again, time acquisition is important, especially where there's a lot of clutter, difficult for radar to pick those out uh, because of the multi-path problem where for radar, everything looks like uh, a house of mirrors um, and you have to unfold them, that's tough. In the middle, uh, radar's definitely not gonna see anything there. Radar's not gonna pick anything up, but a camera could get fooled. And then on the right, you have a camouflaged um, sort of deer that kind of could potentially jump out of the trees. Time to acquisition again is really important. Uh, cameras could get fooled by the camouflage. And, um, and then of course, uh, uh, radar, especially in some environments, it could be too cluttered to actually make it out as an absolute identification of an object. Again, uh, LIDAR seems to make its mark in many different corner cases that are important for um, highway autopilot traffic jam assist and uh, automatic braking. And that's why people are gravitating towards it because it's very deterministic. It's the, probably the most deterministic of the sensors, especially in those situations. But there's another set of things that fall under unpredictable objects, and that's unknown objects, objects that the vehicle hasn't potentially seen or hasn't quite identified yet. Um, and in those situations, you can't use the same interrogation or the same sensor modality that you're using. Your only alternative is to stop and potentially give it back to the driver. And if there's no driver because it's a level five system, that's a problem. Um, or you can change up what you're looking at um, or how you're looking at it, change the pattern, provide more resolution. And a, a LIDAR is actually, because of most LIDAR are scanning LIDARs, it's just, if you build it right, you could make it and turn it into an agile, adaptive LIDAR and use the feedback from the perception to change the behavior of the LIDAR, providing more resolution, maybe changing the pattern, lots of different things that you can do. And of course, is weather. I think it's very hard to understand whether cameras are gonna have a tough time. Um, and you have smoke, LIDAR's multi-echo capability and smoke and haze you know, gives it an advantage over cameras. Radar can definitely see through there, uh, but radar doesn't have a resolution. Radar, we love radar. Radar is good to pull over safely to the side of the road and maybe give control back to the driver or wait something out. In the middle, you see snow, and that's not a lot of contrast that can fool cameras. Uh, for radar, that's a bit too cluttered to, to make important decisions. And everything, again, uh, you have a big multi-path problem in snow. So th those things can be difficult for the other sensors. LIDAR will pick this up, no problem. Um, so again, 
these corner cases show us that LIDAR, and not just LIDAR, but an adaptive LIDAR system that can change behavior with different conditions um, is the right way to go. All right, let me show you one example of a video. This is a case that is, is a lot, comes up a lot in Europe. You see it around the United States, which is the entrance to a tunnel. And in the entrance to a tunnel, as you can see in this picture, cameras have a tough time. They don't have a contrast. Even HDR contrasts have a really, HDR cameras have a really tough time picking up any objects inside the tunnel. There's a big multipath issue for radar. Um, and so radar can't potentially see it or it's not enough resolution. LiDAR has no problem. This is child play for LiDAR, as you can see in this video. And, and so one of the things that uh, we get a lot of inquiries uh, from automatic manufacturers, automotive manufacturers is um, demos on how it does in, in this type of environment. Okay. So what do I think we need going forward? Well, we definitely need all sensors. Again, I'm a fan of all sensors, whether it's radar, LIDAR, cameras, and different types of cameras, thermal cameras, SWIR cameras, midway, long way, uh, or regular day cameras. They're all important. We're going to need them all to solve the level five autonomy problem. But typically, the way you, most people do their stack, they use um, cameras for RGB information, radar, greater velocity, pretty good at block or large obstacle detection. And then, of course, LIDAR gets you those details that are hard to get. Um, with the other two. And then people fuse them together and they're always asking the question, is this an obstacle? This, um, what is this? And uh, where is it going? Those are the main three things that you're always asking. But sometimes with your interrogation pattern, especially your only, if you've only got one type of interrogation pattern with LiDAR, you can't answer this. The other two sensors aren't working for you. And there's no alternative, and you get you could get caught up in this situation where you can't do anything. And when you have an adaptive lidar, an agile lidar, you can change the way you're interrogating the scene, perhaps by having higher resolution, more power, um, using a different type of uh, multi-angle processing. So with a sensor like AI sensor that's adaptive and agile, you can you can accomplish you, know, you can get through these things. So adaptive LiDAR brings high adaptability and intelligence to tackle complex environments. And I think if you're going to solve the level five autonomy problem, you're going to need this. All right, and then a little bit more about what adaptive LiDAR is. Adaptive LiDAR is this idea that you have one set of hardware, but multiple scan patterns, multiple solutions, uh, whether you're in an intersection in the city or whether you're in a rural environment or highway, um, you can adapt the you know the pattern to its to be optimal uh you can adjust for different weather scenarios or environments and then of course because it's fully programmable um not just at design time but um even at runtime you could over time uh do over the air updates which is becoming more and more uh, of a thing that OEMs want to do and as perception engineers and vehicle designers learn from their initial uh, forays into autonomy, they could change. They could use the same set of hard, same hardware set, but change the way the interrogation is done uh, with the sensor. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody's time. I'm hopeful that next time I'll be able to do this in person. Thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.